outside of Chicago in the suburbs, city called Elgin. Uh, I'm a continuous improvement manager for an agriculture company. I served in the military for about six years and I'm 32 years old. Well, thanks for your service. We appreciate you for doing that. Yeah. Probably around 23, 24. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of hard because I always just had a buzz cut. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, unless you see yourself every day, you don't really notice that you're losing hair. It's until you look at the pictures. I w went through a divorce when I was 29. So, uh, just trying to better myself in different ways. Okay. Exercise more and you know the hair thing bothered me a little bit so I did tons and tons of tons of research for about a year because <laughs> I'd never known anybody who's had a hair transplant before so uh, very nervous at first and so flying all the way to Atlanta first to meet Doc John Cole uh, was nice because then you know six months later is when he did the transplant. I took my time. I, I, I looked at a lot of doctors. <laughs> if anybody's from Chicago, they know if they're driving down I-90, they see Brian Norlacher. It's based on a billboard everywhere. I forgot what the company's called. But uh, I, I didn't want to go to like a like a, a chain place. I wanted to make sure I knew the doctor that I was researching, where I didn't just go in and I don't know who I would get. So. Uh, yeah, so doing a lot of research helped a lot. Cool. And, and how did you find out? Oh, uh, hairmentor.com. Oh. Yeah, so that's where I first heard of him. And uh, I think his name was Joe. Joe Tillman? Yeah, so I sent him a couple messages. I, I think the cool, coolest part is, is Nobody was able to tell that I got a hair transplant. That was the most important thing for me was to make sure you couldn't tell. Um, I didn't. I didn't want to be that person who gets a bunch of plastic surgery and you could totally tell that they got plastic surgery. I had to absolutely make sure, like um, in terms of the scarring, I didn't want to do the strip um, because I do like my hair kind of short on the back, so. Uh, it was very important that there was no scarring and you cannot tell and uh, you know to this day people don't know until I tell them so That's they're kind of shocked. <laughs> really it made me uh, a lot more <laughs> comfortable because I got to meet Dr. Cole like for hand to hand have a conversation with him um, down in Atlanta and uh, he, he you let me watch a couple things that he was doing on a patient. So, uh, and looking at all the results that he had, and you know, this booklet that he was showing me, it just made me feel more comfortable because I knew when I do come back, it would be Dr. Cole doing it, uh, not some other doctor. One night, it was just like, screwed, I'm gonna do it. Uh, why not? My my family was very supportive they're like yeah do it why not like they're like you've been researching it forever i'm like so i didn't want to do it till i felt comfortable and then when i finally felt comfortable i made the appointment and uh got the hair transplant couldn't be happier it just was kind of a shock like as it was coming in i was like just waiting, waiting, you know, you have to wait like three months, four months, and, and it's just slowly, and then all of a sudden it just is like, boom, it just hits you. And then it just starts going super fast, and you're like, holy crap, I gotta get more haircuts. And and uh, it, it was kind of funny, because I go to the same barber uh, every time. He's, a, he's an old uh, fellow who's been around for quite a while and doing a barber. He couldn't even notice that I got a hair transplant. So uh, when I told him, uh, he was actually kind of shocked because he's never met somebody who has it. So again, that just like reassured me that um, the, the plan of just making sure it didn't look like I had a hair transplant. In the fall of 2019, um, it was pretty much, you know, fully grown in and then COVID hit. So worked from home for three years. So no one really got to see uh, the full head of hair. So I, and, um, 
which is fine. You know, I don't, it doesn't bother me that people know, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this interview. Um, it's actually interesting seeing my picture on the website. The first thing, just go to forehair.com and boom, there's a picture. It's like, oh, cool. Uh, I've, it's interesting. I've never had, you know, long hair before, so trying to figure out how I want it or, you know, how long I typically want it. Uh, it I'm still learning, so it's interesting, you know. I, I do look back at my, uh, you know, a couple of wedding pictures of mine and when I was 26 years old and, and I was, you could tell that I was just losing my hair and, and now I look at myself and I'm like, I look younger. I actually, surprisingly, don't mind getting haircuts less. I used to get haircuts every two weeks, but uh, I like letting my hair just grow out and then and then just cutting a lot of it off at once. It's kind of weird, but uh, it's, so I've actually gotten haircuts less. Um, yeah, so another thing that changed is I use conditioner now and I've never had it before because I didn't really need it. So um, that's cool. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I've started to like use different types of hair products trying to find something that works because I'm just not used to it. Um, but I just, I just feel as if uh, no hair products are just the best, like right now. The way you see it, that's the, how I typically just like to wear it. When I was a kid, I used to have a huge collet right here. Uh, obviously it's not there anymore when he rebuilt the hairline and from the receding hairline, but I, it's interesting seeing my picture as a kid and just seeing this whoo, hair right there. It's no longer there. I feel as if I um, kind of look almost the same. When I went in the military, I look at pictures. When I did have hair, I was 18, 19 years, well no, I was, I was 17 years old when I joined. Uh, and then for six years, it was after I got out of the military that I kind of noticed the hair loss. Uh, but, you know, being in a relationship, it didn't really bother me. Um, so, um, I mean, it did bother me, but it didn't seem like an issue. Um, you know, so after I got a divorce, I just wanted to better myself and, and I could totally completely notice the difference from before and after just by looking at pictures from when I was 24 or 25 years old to now I look younger. So my goal is um, I always kind of figured what was really important to me um, when I did get the hair transplant, when Dr. Cole did it, I, I told him, I'm like, I, I do feel as if I'm gonna continue to probably lose more hair since I was 29 and at the time, I wanna make sure I still have enough donor hair left to do another hair transplant, if probably needed in the future. Um, so the CRP that I'm here for today, I would also, I'm here for Dr. Cole to kind of you know walk me through the next steps if I wanted to do another procedure, how many grafts I should do, where we should, where we would put them, um, since it's been like six years or five, sorry, four years since the hair transplant. So that's that's my goal, and uh, the CRP, uh, you know, it's, I, obviously it worked. It made my hair grow a lot faster the last time. I believe I got it when I would, got the surgery too. So yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, within three months of surgery, I started noticing the hair come back. Cool. So it was really quick. Yes, that, that's a goal to thicken it up um, and, and, you know, see where we go from here and just continue to do the treatment. So we didn't focus on the crown of my head last procedure, and I believe that's something we would probably want to focus on. Uh, not so much the hairline. The hairline is great the way I just designed it or, or uh, made it so I'm really uh, happy with the hairline which you know is the most important part because that's what people see first when they're looking directly at you uh, so to kind of thicken up the top um, a little bit more and then possibly some of the crown if it's possible that I have a lot of follicles with three like, yeah, multi hair. Uh, he, he said that's a good thing for thickening your hair. Uh, taught me a lot. Like, you use the single follicles to build the hairline, and then the 
and and uh, I think that's like the biggest difference you can kind of notice from people who go to like a like a chain place. You could kind of see that they're not really great at building hairlines or um, that they use these weird machines now. Um, I think like I, I've heard that they just let machines do it now. Uh, it, to me, it's more than a procedure. It's kind of like you have to have an, an art. It's you know you're designing someone's hairline, and that's uh, you know it takes a lot of work to get into that. So I stayed home for about three days before I went back to work until the ASO, you know, kind of got out of my system and my, you know, forehead looked back to normal. Um, then I went back to work and, I, and I'll never forget my, uh, uh, someone I work with, like, said I needed a haircut. That was interesting because um, when I first got there, you know, my hair that was transplanted was still there. I was like, really? I was just like, kind of short, actually, because I did buzz cut it the first time, so that, you know, the follicles were probably, I don't know, not even a quarter of an inch long. And so it was interesting hearing someone say, you need a haircut after having the hair transplant. But um, then it all fell out. But of course, that was as, as, as expected and warned about. And obviously, I knew that was going to happen. So. It's short-lived fun, and then uh, you know, and then it's just like every month it just keeps coming back and coming back and just it just coming. So no pain uh, when they were doing it. Um, it was uh, yeah, no pain at all. Um, after you know my hair came back, I, I, I it was really important that. People couldn't tell I got a hair transplant, but I was very open once I noticed the results that I, I got a hair transplant. Like, uh, I wasn't ashamed of it at all or anything because a lot of men would ask me, uh, my friends would ask me questions about it, and you know, if I could help them, that's great because uh, that's, that's what I was looking for and I didn't really have was somebody who had a hair transplant that I know that I could like, you know, ask these questions to. You see these billboards, you see these ads on TVs, or, and you just don't know those people, and, and, and you don't know if it's true or not. But so when when a family member like myself has a hair transplant, I'm able to help my brothers uh, who who suffer from hair loss too. But um, oh, they'll kill me if you put that on there. <laughs> they'll kill me if you put the. I told them they suffer from hair loss too. But um, when I was in when I was at uh, Universal Studios last. Uh, Halloween for Halloween Horror Nights with my brother and his friend. His friend is uh, same age about around me, and he just had thousands and thousands of questions about it. And I, you know, I first thing I was just like, Dr. Cole did a great job. Like it, it, like if you're going to do a hair transplant, you need to make sure that the person is a very reputable person and knows what they're doing because you could. I know this probably won't be in the video, but you could look like hair plugs like Joe Biden. So, and you could completely tell. Or, um, you know, you could look at Elon Musk and he actually did it right. It's like crazy how I see his pictures. And uh, I think that's actually kind of what sold me is uh, seeing Elon Musk as he was younger, really just going bald. And now he just has a shell of hair. So, <laughs> I would agree. I think that one had, had a nice job done. Um, cool. So, so I got in a relationship. It was actually interesting because I got in a relationship in that period between the hair falling out and growing back. So, so this person um, does not like knew what I would look like before the hair transplant because the hair hasn't grown back. Yeah. And so uh, I always joke, I'm like, you know, if I met you like six months earlier, you could have maybe saved you from getting a hair transplant, but she actually loves my hair okay. and she gets really mad when I cut it. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's important. Well, first of all, it's great because it seems to me, and again, this is just me talking, that the confidence that you gain by making those moves, whether it's you know getting in shape or and in addition to getting a transplant, raise your confidence enough for you to be able to find your, you know, your yeah. the person who ended up being exactly. your partner. So that's yeah. great. And, and she's completely and totally supportive of it. Uh, she's here with me now oh, in, nice. in New York City visiting. 
Uh, so we're gonna make a little vacation out of this too. That's great. So it sounds like you met all your goals. Like you, you know, you came out of a relationship and you wanted to, you know, get back in the game. And sure enough, you got what you wanted. You got, <laughs> you got your hair and you got a good relationship that you seem to be pleased with. So that's wonderful. Yes. Four Hair is run by Dr. Cole with 30 years of few hair restoration experience, and we offer the most cutting edge technology available. In fact, the Four Hair Enterprise sub company Cole Instruments manufactures custom made tools and automated tools for hair restoration physicians all over the world. Our quality, expertise, and skills are superior to other clinics. Our reputation and results are the best in the world. It's time to restore your hair, it's time to choose Four Hair. We hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the little bell button to get notifications of 4Hair's video uploads. For online consultation click on the link on the screen or in the video description.